Hi, I'm Ron Nutter and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. In this video, we're going to start a new series where we show you how to extend your smart home when using Wi-Fi isn't an option. Now, this time we're going to be talking about Ethernet over AC power, aka Powerline. While using Wi-Fi is probably the easiest option, it may not always be an option that you can use all the time. Running network wiring is going to have its own set of challenges because it may be a little harder to do it than you've encountered before because you're going to have to drill possibly through floors, uh, get it through walls, or and it simply may not be possible because you're running your residence because some landlords don't like that kind of thing being done. This video is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithrunner.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this video, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on the subscribe button now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on the like button, thumbs up. Now, let's get started. As with anything, there is more than one way to do this. Now, what I have selected at this point is the... TP-Link AV1000. Now there's a host of these out there and you're going to see a variety of speeds mentioned. One uh, gig is probably going to be the most you're going to be able to, to get and please consider that a theoretical speed because it's going to depend on several things. The quality of the outlets you're plugging into, the wiring that's been running the house. If it's older wiring, you may not get full speed out of it. If you're running from one end of the house to the other, again, you may not get full speed. So if you get the gig speed ones, and sometimes they cost more, sometimes they cost less, then at least you've got a fighting chance. And you may find you have to do some upgrades along the way. Now, one of the things that you're going to run into is you may run a little shy of outlet space. So let's go ahead and move back to the table and I'll kind of give you an idea of what I've run into and maybe to help you along the way just a little bit. Now we'll move our bo product box out of the way here. Now this is an outlet that you're probably used to seeing or an outlet strip. There's several things there. Now to keep in mind you need to plug directly into one of these. If you are using something like an outlet strip that has surge protection functionality in it, and a lot of them do anymore and may not be real clear that they do, you're going to have problems, more than likely. Uh, what you will see happen is, since these devices are running over this wiring, when they plug in that full signal is not going to be getting out on the wire for another box to get connected so that's where you'll need to plug directly in now if you've got in the a phrase i've heard for this kind of oh this is a two banger if this is what you've got it may already be fully in use or you may have things that have to plug in a certain position because of the way they're built for example with this device course now it's got its pins oriented in a certain way so if you plug it down in the lower one it's going to block the entire outlet not a good thing now if you go to the upper outlet that's fine but then you still may run into challenges here because this partial one and here we'll put it all the way in well about as in as it's going to be and so you've got partially obscured here so you may have some problems so let's go ahead and get that back out of here and i had that's a brand new outlet so it's I'm not surprised it was a little resistant. Now, there's a couple of things you can do. Now, this is, and I'm going to double check off to the side here. Yes, it is turned off. Uh, I do have this running through a separate switch right now. Anytime, anytime you work with electric, even if you know what you're doing, take the extra step and make sure that you turn off the breaker that this outlet is on. Yes, it may turn off some other things in that part of the house, or depending on how the circuit's been bridged down in the junction box, or in the breaker box, you may find that it's going to turn several things off. Would you rather inconvenience some folks for a few minutes, or would you rather take your life in your hands? And I think we all know the answer to that question. So, to save time, i am already got this loose, and we're just going to lay that off to the side. Now, this is a solution that you're used to seeing. It's your typical six-outlet overlay, and it takes these two outlets and makes them six. Now, the challenge with that is 
you're still looking at blocking probably two outlets, maybe a little bit more, because you notice these are kind of still spaced a little bit to the tight side. Better than nothing, and now if you do have to do that kind of solution, then look at getting some short patch cable, not patch cables, extension cables. Like this is a one foot cable and you can get a box of them for, I think it's about $15 on Amazon plus or minus. And what you would do is you would then plug this into that outlet and then you could plug your ethernet over AC power into that. Now, not ideal because now you're starting to get a rat's nest going on. So here is an option I found in the past few days, and I'm it's not that much more than these. And this looks very different from what I'm used to. Now, it doesn't have power top and bottom, but that's not going to be a problem for most of what you're doing because it's going to bridge everything internally. So if we go here, and there's still, of course, the, the deal of the screw happened to get tightened down in there and get it all locked down. Look at what you've got. You've got outlets to the side and the top. But more importantly, if we go here and we got this plugged in, now you've still got a good shot at getting down here. And even if it does get tight, using one of these may be an option because then you can take that off to the side. That where you get into the challenge is when you have multiple devices that have their own little transformer and you start this is why having this little type of uh, six-way outlet device is going to be kind of handy so the first thing to get started and these come as, as a two kit now it is possible to extend it on but we'll get to that here in just a second now we'll go over here and i'm actually going to plug in the extension just because it's going to give us a better view of the outlets and and then you can see here the ethernet connections on the top of both and it doesn't matter which one is is going to be the one that we'll get working with here and it's kind of challenge to get everything up and running so we will okay so you see power has gotten to both now what we want to do is we'll hit the pair button for about a second one one thousand and we'll go over here and hit the other button one one thousand and it's going to reach out and establish its own connection here in just a bit and once okay well it didn't start there so let's go here one one thousand there we go now we should see an establish happen here okay now see this and i'm gonna turn the light off here so you can see that so now you can see that it's got both lights up it's got that for power and that it says it sees another device so then all you have to do is just bring an ethernet connection over to one of them and that's connections up there now this one's not on yet because well we have nothing in it so that's really all it takes to uh to get started, actually, let me bring the light level back up over here. I just changed the the backdrop on this, so I'm uh, getting used to changing in the lighting. Now, you can take this beyond a two-outlet solution. The challenge there, even with the different options I've looked at, they say you can do it, but you can't buy just a single one. So you're going to have to go buy another two outlet kit in most cases. Now, I'm not aware of a practical limit, but I would probably, well, I wouldn't want to add more than about maybe another outlet or two to a connection. You're setting up a big bridged connection. So that's something to keep aware of because depending on the kind of traffic you're going on, now you're flooding that amongst all the other devices. So keeping, if you have to get another two outlet kit, maybe keep that separately linked. And then what you want to do is add, or not lab, but label which one is the companion to the other. Now, something you may run into is 
you will hear support uh, mentioned about PoE, which is power over Ethernet. So we've already done Ethernet over power. Well, now we're going to introduce a wrinkle, and that's power over Ethernet. So that's where you could take typically like your, your web cameras, some of your uh, smart routers for home can take their power. They don't have to have a separate wall wart. They can actually take their power over the Ethernet cable. Now, there are two different standards that we're going to want to talk about. The, the two that I'm the most familiar with that you will hear of is 802.3AF and 802.3AT. The big difference in them is distance. The 802.3AT yeah, you may also hear referred to as PoE+. It does run a longer distance. So you'll you know you may have to look at that. It just depends. But if or if you have a device that supports it, it also supports a higher level of power, not so much the distance. And I I, I misspoke earlier, but it, it's more of the higher power, where the 802.3AF maxes out at around 15 watts. The 802.3AT is about 30 watts. May not be a big deal, but these devices that I've been showing you today. Do, do not support PoE or PoE+. Plus. I've looked for ones that do, and the problem you're going to have is those become much more expensive. But I'm working on a solution, and you'll see that in a future video. Now, in terms of how to deal with this, you're going to have to allow space to get everything plugged in. I'll turn this back up on its front here, so you can see, and I'm going to get this unplugged and make this a little easier to, to look at so you can see that you can add a, a, an alternate six-way box like this where you can get things off on the side so if you do have the different pan transformers or wall warts whatever that you want to call them this is a way that you could accommodate that and not do like I've had happen a few times where one or more of these outlets gets blocked so that's a way to handle getting Ethernet over to another part of the house i prefer and this is a personal bias of mine that i'll freely admit i prefer running wired whenever possible because wireless is already starting to get crowded and when you've got devices like a if you got a streaming web camera if you've got an outside security camera something or wireless it's going to be tying up a lot of bandwidth and i prefer to have things on wired whenever possible Again, that's just my preference. Your mileage may vary. So at least you see how you've got some options. Now, some of these also have the ability to, to be many wireless access points. I'm jury still out on that one. I'd love to get one to try. So if, if you're a vendor that has that, uh, make, uh, you know, reach out to me and I'd be willing to, uh, to take a look at it. So... You know, it's just one other option to consider, but that also then does does raise the price. So with that, you're going to see videos to the right or to the left as to the next steps of ones you can watch either in this series or other content that I've produced. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on the like button, which is a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next video.